Welcome back. This is Module 4, Criterion 3, Teaching and Learning Approach. There are six requirements in this criterion. We will go to them sequentially. Requirement 3.1 specifies the need for a strong educational philosophy to exist and to be communicated to all stakeholders. Most evidently, the university's educational philosophy needs to be reflected in its teaching and learning activities. What is the educational philosophy of a program or university? Well, it is a set of beliefs about what students are taught. It is also about how they are taught. Is the teaching only for the sake of ensuring good memory of what is learned? Or is it more outcome-based, designed to be applied, to enable students to be, quote, up and running from the first day they are employed? And how are the students assessed? Is there a practical component to the assessment? Other questions include, what is the purpose of the teaching? What is the role of the teacher as the person who knows it all or more as a facilitator? These are the educational philosophy issues in how and what to teach. We look at several examples of university educational philosophies. This is the educational philosophy for the National University of Singapore. Read the entire slide with emphasis on the words in bold. NUS seeks to develop students with questioning minds, meaning teachers must allow questions, questions about what is taught and how the material is taught. Gone are the days of one-way teacher-to-student communication. It is now two ways, and at times, teachers can also learn from students. Students are educated to be knowledgeable, but to be well-rounded means to also have good character traits such as honesty, courtesy, respect to everyone, dedication to hard work, confidence, a passion for life, and so on. NUS's educational philosophy aligns with its mission and vision in guiding students to be global citizens, to be sensitive to diverse cultures, and to be aware of possibilities at a world level. Entrepreneurship and having an enterprising spirit also feature in NUS's educational philosophy. So is the need to be able communicators. And in the last paragraph, to have a global outlook, but not to forget one's root and character of the Asian origin. Dallas L University has a faith-based educational philosophy dating back to 1911. The philosophy grounds its students and pervades wide into Filipino society and long into a graduate's life. Its core values are faith, service, and communion. To have a service and a social orientation in all that one does. Let's look at one more example. The University of the Philippines educational philosophy articulates academic freedom, commitment to national development, to have democratic access, and to have institutional and fiscal autonomy, to be accessible and responsive, to be innovative and creative, to be guided in a spirit of oneness in overseeing its eight universities and 17 campuses. The educational philosophy of a university dictates the teaching and learning approach that it uses. This approach is a broad description of how the learning activities are designed, grouped, and sequenced to facilitate the achievement of the learning outcomes. The approach also specifies how students receive feedback in their learning process, and then how they demonstrate the achievement of the learning outcome. Broadly, the teaching and learning approach encompasses three areas. The first is to be culture-ready, meaning an educational philosophy is in its place and it is articulate to all parties. There is a reward and recognition system in place 
to incentivize good teaching. And there is some learning also from others on how to teach. Then there is people readiness. That is, the teaching staff are competent in their jobs. That teaching pedagogy has been instilled in them. Remember the saying, just because you have a higher degree or are knowledgeable doesn't mean that you know how to teach. An outcome-based educational system means to engage students, to welcome questions, to have appropriate assessment, to give feedback and to be coaches and mentors, in addition to giving lectures. These people are the teachers and all the support staff that make the teaching possible. Being system ready refers to the design of the curriculum, the monitoring and evaluation of the teaching, and the hardware that enable the teaching to take place. We spoke about curriculum design and its need for constructive alignment in the previous module. The hardware are the classrooms, the teaching equipment, internet access, and the use of information technology in modern teaching methods. The teaching and learning approach translates into three teaching paradigms. The first is to construct the knowledge. Learning is basically knowledge building or constructing it block by block. Cognitivism refers to putting the knowledge within a mental theoretical framework. One way to understand cognitivism is to compare it to behaviorism. Behavior is to do overt actions, whereas cognition is to think. It happens only in the head. Both cognitivism and behaviorism are necessary components in learning. One cannot learn without first putting knowledge in the head. And one also has to do to practice it hands-on like in real life. All teaching methods can be classified under one of five broad strategies. The first is direct instruction, as in conveying information in the most direct way via a lecture. This is often called a teacher-centered approach to teaching and learning. Indirect instruction, on the other hand, also termed student-centered learning, is where there is partly direct teaching and there is also reflective Discussion, problem solving, guided inquiry, students investigating concepts on their own, and generally the instructor taking on the role of a facilitator or supporter as opposed to giving only direct instruction. Indirect instruction is where there is a higher level of student involvement in the learning process. Experiential learning is learning by doing engaging in hands-on experiences so as to better apply theory and knowledge to real-world situations. Interactive learning is multiple channels learning. The channel can be students with other students, learning from each other. The channel can be the use of IT, as in a student interacting with a computer. The interaction can also be with non-IT material, for example, physical models of an automobile engine. Independent study is where there is little to no supervision from a teacher. After the topic of study is defined and the task agreed to, the student is left to do the work on everything oneself until it comes time to assess the work done. It is sometimes called own time, own target method of learning and happens mostly in the third and fourth years of study. Under the five broad strategies of learning, there are a whole host of methods. A few of the novel teaching methods include gamification, web-based training, simulation, collaborative learning, the use of adaptive learning, using AI to guide learning, flipped classrooms, mobile-based learning, and so on. To recap thus far, we started off with discussing educational philosophy. This leads to a teaching and learning approach. The approach involves elements of constructivism, cognitivism, and behaviorism. 
all teaching methods can also be classified under one of five broad approaches of direct and indirect instruction, experiential and interactive learning, and independent study. Another important issue is retention vis-à-vis -vis the teaching and learning methods used. We can all attest that direct lectures result in the lowest retention rate. What do we remember of our university lectures from 10, 20 years ago? Very little. At the next level, there is some amount of demonstration through the use of audiovisuals. Retention improves. We get to see examples of how theory is applied. We go to a higher level when we are involved hands-on, when we can discuss with fellow students and learn from each other. The retention rate improves even more. Learning involves the head. Doing when we like what we do involves the heart and emotions. And we get a sense of joy when we accomplish a task. This results in even greater retention. The highest level is where students are able to repackage the material that they have learned. Repackage as in provide a show and tell demonstration of what they have learned or are forced to defend one's thesis. The learning retention will be the highest of all. The way university education takes place is evolving. The so-called education 4.0 is in response to coping with demands to produce manpower training for the fourth industrial revolution. IR 4.0 involves advanced technology, automation. Education 4.0 takes place ubiquitously, anytime and everywhere, while on the bus to campus, waiting in line for lunch. The focus on STEM is pervading, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Education is no longer a four-year affair. It takes place continually throughout one's life, at least until one retires. Under Teaching and Learning 4.0, teachers develop curiosity in students about a topic through asking questions of why and providing glimpses of what solutions may mean to the world. Students are imbibed with fundamental knowledge. They practice what is learned. They apply learned material to a host of slightly different situations. And they are encouraged to innovate through improving the concepts taught. This is a far cry from students memorizing facts, regurgitating them, and getting good examination marks. Equally at the forefront of Education 4.0 are new skill sets required of university graduates to know when, how to ask questions, to think critically, laterally, and horizontally, to view an issue from multiple perspectives, to be emotionally intelligent in the world, to be able to manage others, to have cognitive flexibility, to be able to solve complex problems, to be able to negotiate, to have a service orientation and to be creative in one's work. And a new part requirement under version 4.0 is how does a program prepare its students for entrepreneurship? How does it instill in them an enterprising mindset? In more and more programs, students are taught how to set up businesses and to understand the concepts of financial risk. Employment is not just about getting a job and a salary. It can mean also going into business for oneself. Much has been said about the days of education while in a university. But it is what happens beyond graduation that features in a person's life. It is the ability and the passion to carry on learning throughout one's lifetime. At a university is where the seed of curiosity is planted. There is lifelong learning. There is vertical development, which would be the pursuit of higher goals, whatever one may deem them to be. It may be to earn one or more higher degrees. 
It may be employment advancement. It may be to better oneself through giving back to society or to advance one's ability to think in more and more complex, systemic and strategic ways. Horizontal development would involve the improvement of oneself at a similar type of task at about the same level of difficulty. A further word on lifelong learning given its importance in today's employment landscape. There is the need for cultural awareness and to communicate in two or more languages. This is due to the internationalization of borders. Social and civic competency feature well in having lifelong learning skills. Not to mention the need for science and technology and digital competencies in all university graduates. Wikipedia defines lifelong learning as an ongoing voluntary and self-motivated pursuit of knowledge for personal and professional reasons. Lifelong learning activities are those that enhance social inclusion, active citizenship, personal development, self-sustainability, personal competitiveness, and employability. You are now familiar with how the criteria are presented. We first discuss concepts relevant to each criterion. Then, the requirements are discussed, pulling in concepts relevant to that particular requirement. For requirement 3.1, the university's educational philosophy is shown to be articulated and communicated to all stakeholders. The teaching and learning approach and its activities show elements of being culture-ready, people-ready, and system-ready. The teaching and learning approach manifests components of student-centered learning and ubiquitous learning. This is requirement 3.2. This is today's meaning of students being active learners and participating responsibly in the learning process. For requirement 3.3, a host of specific teaching and learning methods and activities are shown to be used, especially the use of recent information technology-based methods, that a broad range of strategies are used in the teaching and learning, including direct and indirect instruction, experiential and interactive learning, and also independent study. Lifelong learning being a hallmark and requirement of university education today is manifested clearly in the program. These include cultural awareness, digital competency, foreign language skills, learning how to learn, civic competencies, and so on. This is requirement 3.4. What is new in version 4.0 are requirements of skill sets for future ready graduates so as to reduce the chances of them becoming obsolete. Plus, injecting an element of entrepreneurship and enterprise into an academic program. This is requirement 3.5. The last requirement of Criterion 3 calls for the teaching and learning activities to be matched and aligned to the expected learning outcomes of the program and to show that there has been feedback from stakeholders, especially external stakeholders, to show that a PDCA cycle of improvement has been applied to the teaching and learning activities. This is the end of Module 4, Criterion 3, Teaching and Learning Approach. The next module is Module 5, Criterion 4, Student Assessment.